This morning, every morning on this programme, we're trying to put your mind at ease by getting your questions on the coronavirus answered. Dr James Gill, who's a, a regular on this programme, uh, reviews the papers. You were here only last week, James. Good to see you back here this morning. But morning, Phil. Obviously on this issue specifically this morning, here to give us the facts. Uh, and first of all, just uh, your thoughts, I think, before I get into questions from the from the audience, your thoughts on how this story is uh, is evolving. And it does, uh, does uh, feel like, doesn't it, we're going to another stage of preparedness for this virus well absolutely i mean we've had that containing just trying to stop um it spreading we've said that that's probably not work now yeah. so the delay's gone over as you said it's about trying to reduce the peak and a good way of looking at that is actually the toilet rolls that everyone's been taking <laughs> if everyone goes and buys one toilet roll all at the same time there's none available and you've got a massive peak Whereas if actually we're a little bit calmer and we occasionally go and buy our toilet rolls, yeah, there's still a large need, but we can supply them and that peak, that number of cases, or toilet rolls in this case, gets spread around. So it's not quite as worrying overall. So this is this is specifically done so that the health service, which we know, you know, is, is pressed at the best of times, can cope better with any demand it will have on acute beds. Certainly, you know, we're going to be hearing a lot more, I, I would have thought, wouldn't we, in the community with the elderly or one of those are most vulnerable groups when it comes to the, the coronavirus. This announcement, really, if it does come, isn't meant to scare or get people worried. It's effectively saying, look, we are in control of this. We can see what can happen and we're going to take the measures now to make sure that we so try and suppress that that peak you've spoken of absolutely i think you're completely right with that that by moving to this stage we're saying right we're not letting this run out of hand mm. we're w taking all the evidence we've had from china from italy we're using that to work out what's the best approach and we don't know everything and that's the main the main thing yeah. so a lot of what we're seeing in the news is discussion one person says this and another expert says that this is a new virus. It didn't exist in humans before December. So we are taking one step at a time. And I think it's important that we react appropriately and carefully. And at the end of the day, if we've gone off the deep end and in three weeks' time nothing has happened... <laughs> We'll actually consider that a win. Better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Isn't it? Right, let's get to some of the, your questions, please. And thanks very much indeed for these. 8133, start your text with CWR this morning, please. Uh, first question for you, Jane. Is it scaremongering or is it not as bad as people think? Is it just flu blown out of proportion? Good question, that. And you hear that quite a lot, don't you? If you surf around on social media, you'll see loads of stats that say, you know, norovirus claims this life, winter flu claims this amount of lives, and coronavirus has only claimed so far in this country uh, eight lives. Is it scaremongering? Is it just a, a badder or a worse case of flu? Or should we be more concerned about it? It's not scaremongering. It's about being prepared and making sure we know what's coming. Flu has much worse numbers. So if you look at America, there were 45 million cases of flu last year, and there were approximately um, half a million deaths due to flu last okay. year in the US. We've got 100,000 cases worldwide of corona. The problem is coronavirus is much more infective than the flu is. So we want people to know about this. People move very slowly. Yes. Think how long you know we've been talking about this, but when did you actually start to change your process of washing your hands, making sure you, you know, you're properly disinfecting and things like mm. that? We need to make sure the information's out there so we get that small, uh, small changes that people can do to protect themselves. OK, uh, next question for you over here. My daughter has asthma. Is she at high risk? Good question. We've heard about the underlying uh, health reasons for the for the death so far. Should asthmatics be worried? I think we're seeing this a huge amount. The vast majority of people don't have a lot to be worried about coronavirus. If you do get it, it'll be very mild or even a moderate cold. But a lot of people are worried about people that they know. More the elderly are a problem. Specifically, specifically to that lady's question, mm. we've actually been very, very lucky with children so far. If we look at the cases that have come from China, so that's where we've got the biggest data at the minute, there have been very, very few. I mean, the, the CDC even described it as very rare children cases, and if so, they've been mild. However, mm. obviously this lady here is worried about an asthma, and we know that all of the deaths that we've had and all of the people who are sicker have had other health complications. Now, the chap that's died at... Um, sorry, the person who's died at George Eliot, and yes. obviously our hearts go out to that family, the crucial thing in the reports there is that patient had a lot of other 
comorbidities, they had other health problems. And that's where the risk is coming for the elderly. If you've got asthma and things like that, it's something to be aware of, it's something to be cautious of. But particularly if you're younger, I wouldn't be too concerned. Just make sure you're doing the simple things. Washing your hands, following the simple NHS, you know, catch it, kill it, bin it. Mm. Coughing into your arms, getting a hanky. My girlfriend the other day actually, you know, gave me a proper, you know, material hanky, so I'm not like, getting rid of it, and that's yeah. going through the wash every day. Yeah. You know, okay. Simple things. I, I, I carry one of those, and that's well uh, well worth thinking about. James, hang on there. Uh, we'll uh, come back in 10 minutes or so and uh, get some more questions answered. The new Vin Diesel superhero gets released this weekend. We'll hear what James thinks about those before nine. From James Luxford to Dr. James Gill, back with us in the studio this morning. James, thanks for doing this. It's an epidemic it. of James's. It is. It, it, everywhere you turn, you're like a... Uh, a James virus, and uh, it's, it's a good one, though. And we're happy to have you here this morning and pretty, really appreciate you doing this. Answering your questions on the coronavirus this morning with the government expected at uh, Cabinet Emergency Cobra meeting today to talk about moving the, to the next stage of preparedness for the coronavirus. Uh, having tried to contain it for so long, uh, the government will today move to the delay phase. This is where you're effectively trying to delay the peak of the virus, so actually less people contract it. And by making measures, maybe like closing schools, stopping people from going into work who've got um, even the mildest of symptoms, you then hold off the peak of the disease to potentially to the summer. When, as you were just saying to me, uh, James Gill, uh, the sunshine, the ultraviolet will kill off the virus. Absolutely. So there's, we're currently doing a lot of research on how the virus works, and there's lots of stuff we don't know. If you can get some situations where the virus can live on what are called fomites, so tables, chairs and stuff like that, for up to nine days. Right. But in most situations, realistically, it's going to be killed in hours to a day or so. And particularly if you just wipe the surfaces down with simple wipes, it's going to die in a minute. <laughs> So it, it, from that side of things, it's again about that personal hygiene. Yeah. You don't even have to rush out and buy antibacterial soap. Straightforward bar of soap like your grand's got. That will, seriously, Carbolic. that's the big thing. Absolutely. Right. Wash your hands. Really? Okay. Uh, good to hear and a good message to keep repeating and for us all to try and understand. Lots of you got in touch with your questions about the coronavirus. Uh, here's another one for you. Is it likely in the future that uh, daycare centres will be limited to the amount of visitors that are seen? Good point, isn't it? What will happen to uh, day centres, do you think? Now, we're, as you've said, we're now moving to the delay phase, so the advice may change. At the minute, there's a suggestion that day, day centres, smaller gatherings, we're going to begin to discourage, and we're going to look more to that social um, distancing. So at the minute, I'm safe from you because we're about two metres away. Right. Things like that. It, this is a, something that's spread through droplets. It is not airborne. OK, so you've got to, if someone is affected, then, you know, they need to be coughing and spluttering and they've got a, a risk area, you know, a blast zone, if you will, yes. of about two metres around them. Okay. If you walk down the street and, some, and, you know, you pass somebody, the likelihood of you being affected by that is very low. Okay. And that's why we're also not advising um, face masks and things like that. Okay. Face masks may be the, one of the worst things that you could do. So most people don't wear them properly. Huh. Okay, and as a result, we touch our face about a hundred times a day. I've just done it now. Yeah. Okay, and if you've on. touched a table that someone hasn't washed their hands and touched, you could then put that on your face. Okay. If you've got a face mask on that's not properly fitted anyway, you're going to keep moving it around. It may increase how much you're touching your face. Now, people who do have the virus or have symptoms then a face mask is a, definitely a sensible thing because they can stop it spreading to others. Okay. But that face mask, just walking around the community, will not protect you and might make it worse. Got a text message from Barbara uh, mm -hmm. in Stoke. She says, chemists, if they have to close, uh, what would people like me or on a different medication, regular medication, nothing to do with the coronavirus, how would we get our meds? Uh, I've got a... a... It's a definitely a sensible you've touched a table that someone hasn't washed their hands and touched, you could then put that on your face. Okay. If you've got a face mask on that's not properly fitted anyway, you're going to keep moving it around. It may increase how much you're touching your face. Now, people who do have the virus or have symptoms, then a face mask is a definitely a sensible thing because they can stop it spreading to others. Okay. But that face mask, just walking around the community, will not protect you and might make it worse. Got a text message from Barbara uh, mm. in Stoke. She says, chemists, if they have to close, uh, what would people like me or on a different medication, regular medication, nothing to do with the coronavirus, how would we get our meds? Uh, I've got a, a regular heartbeat. I'm 83 years of age. 
am I going to be okay? Says Barbara. So clearly she's really anxious, isn't she? Absolutely. And that, that's a big thing. We're trying so hard to deal with the anxiety at the minute with people. And that, that's actually, in, at the moment, is causing more harm to people. That horrible <laughs> than worry. Than the actual virus. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it's not affecting many people at the minute. But to answer Barbara's question there, don't worry. <laughs> I personally think the chances of the pharmacies closing, because that will be one of the essential things, mm. is next to you know zero. But let's go down the worst case scenario. Even if they do say, we're not going to let you come the front door, most pharmacists deliver medications anyway to people's homes. So if you're taking regular medication, you will get your medication. There's no need to stop stockpile and just do the same as you're doing at the minute. Put in your regular prescriptions. You'll get it fine. Don't worry. Barbara, you'll get it. Don't worry. OK, uh, nothing to worry about there. Big question for many people in cars on school runs this morning. Have a listen to this. I work in a school and my question is, should schools remain open? So there we are. Uh, a lot of teachers going to be asking about that. Uh, that would be, I'm imagining, James, one of the one of the things that will be discussed at this COBRA emergency meeting today. Absolutely. So I can't give an absolute on that. If we look back to China, and that, because it came out there first, that's where a huge amount of you know focus research was done. There's not been much evidence to suggest that the spread from children to adults and things like that. All of the hot spots, all of the cases where you got it, were in households. So somebody will bring it in, and then it would spread in the household. It wasn't so much coming from gatherings and things like that. Mm. But, as we've said, social distancing, you have gatherings, there's an increased risk of things spreading. So at the moment, probably not going to stop, close down the schools, etc. But it's something that might change. OK, James, good to see you again. Thank you for taking the time. Thank really you, appreciate it. Dr. James Gill, uh, with uh, your questions answered on the coronavirus, and we'll, of course, keep you t in touch throughout the day on BBC CWL with the outcome of that Cabinet Cobra emergency meeting at lunchtime.